When we were ready to add interactivity to our programs, we used browser.sandbox. And browser.sandbox allowed us to uh, attach an init, an update, and a view function uh, so that we could kind of have that uh, loop that um, allows us to create a new state, determine how to update it, and then determine how to view that state. Uh, the next step in our learning journey is going to be um, learning about browser.element, uh, which introduces two new things, commands and subscriptions. And we're going to take that one step at a time. Let's, let's hop over to the code. Um, and let's take a look at um, what we have going on here. So uh, this is our main module, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be small again, just gonna be a, a little guy. Um, and then over here, we have our counter from before. Oops, we should probably run Elm Reactor so we can see this running. this zoom in uh, so we have our counter app uh, from earlier um, and our counter app was able to um, uh, keep track of a, some state uh, initialize what that state's going to be uh, it was able to uh, we we're, were able to define like which ways we're allowed to update that state so these increment decrement reset uh, custom type variants and then uh, having an update function allowed us to say take in uh, the message that came in, take in the current model, and let's return the new model. Um, so that's the high level idea of how that worked. And then view just took in whatever the current value of the model is and returned some HTML. Um, uh, when we use browser.sandbox, uh, those were the um, those were the signatures that the functions needed to be. So we needed model to HTML, we needed message to model to model. Um, but we're gonna upgrade this to allow us to do a little bit more interesting things. Um, Maybe in addition to uh, setting some state, um, we want to be able to fire off um, some type of side effect to the outside world. Um, so for now, I'm going to do command.none, but you can imagine that if you're uh, starting up an application, maybe you want to set the initial state and then you want to fire off a web request, something like http.get, or um, uh, maybe you want to generate a random number, random.generate. Uh, we'll come back to command in the next video, um, but for now, we're just going to uh, say that we're not going to do any side effects when we initialize our page, and that's what command.none is going to be for. Um, and then also, um, there's going to be uh, the ability to pass in data from JavaScript on startup. Uh, we're going to take a look at that in the video after that <laughs> when we start getting into JavaScript interop. So you can ignore this flags parameter for now, um, but flags are an important uh, feature in the language that lets us um, get initialization data for our application when it starts up. So we upgraded init to uh, have that signature. We're going to upgrade update so that when I do an increment, decrement, or reset, um, I can uh, still update the state of my app. But in addition to that, um, I might also want to maybe like log something, you know, store something to disk, like different things, or store something to local storage. Um, for this, we're just going to do command.none again. Um, our counter is just going to increment, and that's going to be all we need. And then uh, view is actually okay. View doesn't need to change. Uh, but down here, we're going to want to change this to an element. And we're going to want to add one new function that we haven't seen before. Um, so there is a function called subscriptions. And that's what we're going to be using today. Subscriptions allows us to set up listeners that will call messages for us. So just like HTML can emit um, an increment message on click or uh, reset message when you click a button. Um, there's this idea of a subscription, and that's shortened as sub here, um, that we can uh, have that continually listen for something. Maybe it's a timer, or maybe it's like a browser resize, um, and it can call a certain message when that event happens. Um, so I'm going to use uh, time.every, and uh, time.every is a function that's going to return one of these subscriptions. And what it's going to take is um, Basically, what time.every does is every interval, it's going to send a message and it's going to give us like the POSIX timestamp. Um, we're not going to use the POSIX timestamp, but uh, if we did this, we said every second, I want you to, um, you know, uh, call this tick message. Um, so we can uh, call it tick, we can call it timer went off. Uh, but this is a message that we get to define and add to our list of messages. And here we're saying that we're going to get access to a time.posix value. And time.posix is just like what's the current timestamp um, 
uh, on the machine when that uh, message went off. Um, and then when we save this, we're going to get uh, this highlighted in red and it's going to say, hey, you've got to handle this case. So command.none. So when the timer goes off, uh, we're not going to do anything now, but let's make sure that everything uh, works as expected. I'm going to add this little subscriptions header here to kind of separate my program. And when I save this, it looks like we don't have any errors. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and let's see if our program still works. So plus minus reset. Uh, let's do some, uh, let's like update our state. Let's make our uh, counter increment every time um, this uh, timer goes off. So what we should see is in the beginning, uh, our count is zero. Um, but as time goes on, uh, we should see every second it increments by one. So I'm going to refresh over here and we'll see if that works. One, two, three. Awesome. So what's happening is we um, registered a subscription that every second uh, we want the Elm runtime to call the timer went off message. And we're using an underscore here saying we don't really care about this POSIX value. We're not going to use it uh, to compute anything special. Um, but yeah, every second uh, we're getting this counter and we can hit reset and bring it down. So we can kind of like race the <laughs> race the counter where we're clicking minus manually um, and it, you know, it goes up, I go down, it goes up, I go down. And we can play tug of war with the counter if we want. Uh, that's kind of a, a silly little um, <laughs> silly little app we can make. Um, so why don't we make it something more uh, realistic? Let's make like a, a timer that has start, it has a stop. Um, and then it has like, uh, you know, how much time has elapsed, that kind of thing. Um, so let's, uh, let's change the program to do that. So I'm going to say, um, let's call this time. We're going to have a Boolean for, is the timer running? And we're going to say time. Uh, why don't I call this seconds? Seconds elapsed. Uh, and then is running is going to be uh, false in the beginning. Let's do that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of increment decrement reset, and we're just going to have a timer went off. So I'm going to get rid of all these. So we're not making this little counter anymore. Uh, and then we can get rid of these buttons. And I'm just going to comment these two out because uh, we're going to want buttons again soon. Time, or sorry, seconds elapsed is what we named it, right? Seconds elapsed. And so we can say uh, timer. And now when we uh, refresh, oops, uh, looks like I was still calling count here, but we don't have a count variable anymore. Um, so now we have a timer. The timer uh, is running, but um, we don't want it to run because we said is running should be false. So what we can do is we can say if model that is running, let me scroll down a little bit. If model dot is running, then we want to run this timer. Otherwise, we're going to use sub dot none. And sub dot none is just like command dot none. It's saying I don't want any subscriptions for this program when my model, uh, when the timer is not running. Um, so I'm going to save this and we're going to refresh. And now you'll see that the timer stays at zero. Even as I talk and seconds are ticking by, <laughs> uh, the timer is not, is not running here. So let's add a button that allows us to start or stop the timer. And let's also use this uh, is running to determine if we should show the start button or the stop button. So if the model is running, then we're going to want to uh, show a button that says stop. And on click, we can say uh, clicked stop. And then we're going to have an else. So uh, if the thing is not running, we want to show a button that allows us to start it. So I'm going to really rely on the Elm compiler here. I'm going to save and Elm's going to let me know, hey, you didn't define these. And so it's going to underline those for us. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this because uh, I got my button. I got my copy paste um, uh, fix from keeping those around. Cool. So we've got click start. We've got click stop. What we're going to do is we are going to add those to our update branch. And so all these are going to do is we're going to change our model and we're only going to change the is running property to either equal true or false. And we're not going to need to um, uh, do any uh, commands for this. 
uh, for this to work. So when we click start, we want to set is running to true, but when we do click stop, we want to set is running to false. So this is the new uh, behavior. Let's see if we got it working. So we're seeing start because the timer's not running. When we hit start, uh, it starts to, to tick, which is great. Cool. All right, so we can stop that timer. Um, we can also um, uh, add multiple subscriptions if we want. So this is like the, the timer ticking. Uh, why don't we add back in that reset button so we can reset our timer. Is running is gonna be false when we reset and the seconds elapsed. It's gonna equal zero. So let's make it so we hit the reset button, it stops the timer too. So clicked reset. And then um, no matter what, we do wanna show that reset button. Clicked, oops, click to reset. I like to name my functions um, what happened uh, to try to answer the question like what happened. So when the timer went off, clicked, you're gonna see all these are gonna be in past tense. And that's just a convention that I like to stick to. Um, and it's really helpful when using the debugger because you can kind of see, you know, uh, what occurred, like what, what happened. So if we hit start here um, and we hit reset, not only should it stop or uh, reset the number back to zero, but you'll see um, that it also stopped the timer. So if we click reset here, uh, that works too. Um, so we can stop the timer there and then we can hit reset. That all works. So that's our app that's using subscriptions. Um, you can add all kinds of subscriptions. So just an example of something that you might add uh, is if you use browser.events, uh, there's all kinds of um, stuff that's available uh, in the, the browser package, things that you might want to use, you know, like resized uh, window that takes in, you know, the, the width and the height uh, of the window. You can just, um, you can add as many subscriptions as you want, and we're going to use the sub.batch function to do that. So uh, although this one is conditional and based on if, you know, our, our timer should be running or not, uh, we can have browser.events on resize and notice that on resize is expecting a function that needs two integers to become a message and it'll return a sub with that message type um, so that's why we gave um, this two integer arguments that's going to make uh, the compiler happy and that's going to make sure that uh, when we call it it's going to have access to the width and the height so i'm just going to add this to the top with height um, and then you know, you can, you can do whatever you want with that information. Um, we can do something crazy. Why don't we do something crazy just for fun? Uh, we're going to say when you resize the window, the seconds elapsed is going to be equal uh, to the width. All right, so watch this. This is going to be weird. So I'm going to resize the window, and then you're going to see <laughs> the timer. Uh, seconds elapsed is equal to the width of my browser. As I resize the height, you know, that number is not changing. Uh, but if we wanted to, we could use the height. Uh, there's all kinds of subscriptions that you can uh, check out with uh, Elm, uh, and uh, they all work. So it's it's going to call resized window every time uh, that resize happens, and um, you just have to write what you want it to do uh, when that when that happens. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at command in the next video, and then you will have mastered uh, browser.element. You'll you'll know what uh, all the things do. Uh, so I'll see you there.